is time for another episode of the Cultural Hall, and uh, I'm excited because I don't think that we've ever done this. We were just remarking um, before we started recording about how long the Cultural Hall has been around, uh, 12 plus years as you're listening to this. I don't think that we have ever done a father-daughter episode, and so for the first time oh. ever in the Cultural Hall, uh, I'm glad to welcome back. You may, if you are a lifer of the Cultural Hall, remember episode 43, Mike Winder. Uh, welcome back, sir. Thank you. Great to be back in the Cultural Hall. And uh, she was just barely old enough to get a library card when I recorded with her dad previously, uh, his daughter, Grace. Thanks for being here. Uh, yeah, happy to be here. Now, it's kind of fun for me to to have this because um, I, I'm excited to know the dynamic of uh, fathers and daughters. I don't have a daughter uh and, and and so to be able to kind of see this play out, but you guys have decided, you know what, we love each other so much, we would like to write a book together. So Grace, yeah, we did. Tell tell me how this came about. What is this? The title of the book. I'll tell everyone. Let me give that at the very beginning. Is hidden in Hollywood. It's the gospel found in one thousand and one movie quotes. Tell me tell me how that came about. Well, I, I've written a few books, Richie. We talked about Presidents and Prophets a decade sure. ago, for example. Um, and I, I love movies. Grace loves movies. And we thought it'd be fun to put together a, a book of how some of the different quotes speak to our beliefs as members of the, of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. There's a lot of quotes. Sometimes they don't mean to, but to us, they speak to gospel truths. And we had fun gathering all the nuggets and sewing it all together. So, Grace, did you come to your pops and be like, listen, I'm almost old enough to that I'm going to be wanting a car. Let's make this as a secondary uh, income. You know, whatever books sell, that's going to the car income. How did did you come to him or did he come to you about working on this book together? Um, well, he's been writing books all of my life. Oh. And I was like, you wanted to write another one. I was like, oh, can I help out? Be hmm. a writer and you're like maybe not a writer yet but a research assistant so i started working on that and i had a lot of fun that's cool so uh it's just within the book it's it's a thousand and one quotes is it just could it be like a daily primer where it's like do or do not there is no try and then you flip the next page and you know it could be it could be something like that or do you guys give context and gospel principles how does that work um so there's we have different chapters 19 of them, right? We have topics such as choice and accountability, okay. um, the father and the son, um, hope, faith. So it's by topic and the movie quotes um, are related to that topic in the book. And we have a little, like in, in each group, it'll be a little bit of gospel doctrine, uh, some quotes from general authorities or con general conference or scriptures even. And then boom, 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 a few movie quotes that, that tie in or echo those those church teachings. And so with each chapter and each subheading, you get a, a good dose of, of scripture and then a good dose of movie quotes that relate to those. It's kind of fun. So, Mike, is this something that the whole Winder family does or is this just a Grace and Mike thing? You know, I think we're kind of the book writing nerds, aren't yeah. we, Grace? I mean, everyone's busy with different projects and different interests. One son paints and... Uh, one son's at college and a daughter's in, in grad school. But uh, yeah, Grace and I are kind of the writing nerds. And it's kind of fun. Now, uh, so my dad and I growing up, uh, we did this thing where um, he would help me like with my paper route, which meant we had to get up. Grace, I'll tell you about what a newspaper is. It used to come on your doorstep <laughs> uh, before the internet and it had to be delivered by people that needed to learn life lessons about working. And I happened to be one of those people. And uh, so we would get up super early and the game that we would sort of play is we would turn the radio on and we would uh, battle each other to see if we could know the either the chorus of the song that was coming on the radio or like the 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 artist or the title of the song when you guys watch movies has this made it so uh you guys are you're watching for enjoyment but you're also like dad did you catch that that could be a great yeah. follow-up kind of thing well e even though the book's out we were at hunger games uh ballad of birds and the beat no what is it grace uh, songbirds and, <laughs> and snakes, snakes last night and there's a couple times where there's a quote where it's like oh yeah in the next edition that could make it and so there's a lot of that that happens huh yeah now you know, Chris uh, has been my helper for years uh, 
I, after mayor of West Valley, I was in the state legislature here in Utah for six years. And she, I joked, but only half joked that she was my campaign manager. There was no one better at helping me put out signs and going door to door, knocking doors than my youngest Grace. And so she's used to helping her dad with crazy projects, which is a lot yeah. of fun. Do you like doing it or do you just love your dad? Um, I think both. I've always been interested in politics, government, and now lighting. And it just helps me, um, my relationship with my dad and also some good life skills that I'll take with me throughout my life. Now, is it a thing where mom mom sort of wishes that she'd gotten on the mo movie quote band and could be a part of it? And you're like, sorry, mom, it's a father daughter thing. Well, here's the thing. Karen is a, a very gifted musician and piano teacher. And Grace can play piano with her mom and is a great musician herself. And then she writes with her dad. So she's oh, cool. inherited some talents and interests from both parents, which is good for her. Yeah. So Mike, I got to ask you, I mean, research assistant, not mentioned on the front of the book. I kept looking and I'm, and I'm like, uh, I see Mike, but I don't see Grace's name on the front. I, I, I want to take you to, you know, a research assistant deserves to be on the cover, my friend. Well, we, we do have Doug Wright, who wrote the foreword on the cover. Uh -huh. But then we do have on the inside page there, Grace Winder, research assistant. And it's been fun as we've had family and friends ask for autographed copies. I'll sign it. And they're like, well, we want Grace to sign it, too. And she's been good to oblige. So that's that's awesome. Do you guys have a particular kind of movie that you like to watch together? I mean, there's all sorts action. And you mentioned, you know, the Hunger Games, that kind of thing. And I'm imagining there's maybe some comedy uh, movies that are referenced in there. Is there a, ty a type of movie that you guys like the best? Um, we like a lot of the Star Wars movies. We grew up very big Star Wars fans and found a lot of quotes in those movies. Uh, the Harry Potters are good as well. We like watching those around the house. It's funny, as we worked on this book, any book that had kind of a wise sage sort of person, whether it was Gandalf or Obi-Wan Kenobi or Yoda or Master Ugwe or the Grandmother Willow in Pocahontas, Mr. Mm -hmm. Miyagi, anytime you have kind of this source of wisdom, they're just a great source of good quotes, aren't oh, yeah. they? Now, uh, were you guys determined a particular number? Were there Was there any discussion about any quotes that, you know, maybe you, Mike, felt like it should be in and Grace is like, absolutely not. I draw the line at that quote or vice versa. Quotes that maybe didn't make it in or that you guys debated about should be in? Uh, there's a few where I'm like, should it be in? That's a little bit of a stretch. But you're like, I can make it tie in. So we put them in. There are a few that are a stretch and she'd call me on it. But we, we got a lot of them in. Okay, I want to know about one of those stretch ones. Tell me, tell me about one that you're like, listen, at the core of it, it it is a thing, but we, you know, we were searching for a hundred or a thousand and yeah. one. We needed a little gimme. I'll tell you one. When we were working on the chapter on prayer, there's the classic Buzz Lightyear quote by Buzz, uh, reach for the sky, right? Reach for the sky. And Grace is like, that's a stretch, Dad. That doesn't make me do a prayer. I said, I know, but look, and I found a President Monson quote that talks about how we need to reach for the sky. Mm. And reach the heavens when we need help so i included it anyway but yeah yeah she should keep me grounded and there was a few like There's that few but... <laughs> do you know can you think of another one grace i'm just curious um, and and this is not to discount any, by any means the book again a thousand no, not at all. one of these things but i i love the idea of i don't know dad are we thinking this and then you go oh eh, well um one of them is uh from frozen let it go let it go let it go uh -huh. like, yeah that one i was a little hesitant on but we tied it in it fit really well in the chapter on forgiveness and moving past things let it go so uh self-published or has someone picked this up no well, this is eborn books and uh he's got him in on eBornBooks.com and on amazon yeah. and all of his eborn book stores he even has a store in nauvoo that we visited this summer as a family and it's there in the uh, bookstore there in nauvoo yeah, he sent a box to Nauvoo already. So from Utah to Illinois, you can get this. Of course, with Amazon, you can be anywhere in the world to get this. Sure, sure, sure. And there's a link in the show notes that people can just click on. That way, they don't have to try and find it anywhere else. They just go beep and then be right. able to, to purchase it that way. Does that feel pretty cool, Grace, having a, yeah. a book that you worked on? Yeah, it's so cool. Well, I think she's just the research assistant on this one, but I can see her being a co-author or author in her own right on the next ones because she's got yeah. a lot of talent and I think learned a lot with this project. I have. If you got to pick up uh, the next subject of the book, Grace, tell me what, what would be your next book. Now, I'm not saying this is going to be it or that you don't have to make any sort of commitment about it, but if you got to pick 
what would you what would your your next book be about yeah well i like the idea of church books um for religion church of jesus christ of latter-day saints Mm -hmm. so incorporating the gospel more in a book would it's really interesting to me i know my dad has written a lot of them but there's so much to be explored and it'd be fun to write a book like that what i think would be unique too is from you know uh, i always laugh whenever uh, adults say well the youth and I'm like, whoever calls, you know, hello, youth. I, you know, it, That seems to me like a funny kind of nomer. I would love to right. be able to have uh, a book um, for young members of the church written by a young member of the church being like, yeah. you know, this is what I feel when I when I look at Instagram or Facebook and I, I feel this way. And, you know, this is what it's like when I'm at a party and people are doing the the things that uh, that aren't true to what I know I should be doing, or maybe that they even should be doing. But but being able to do that from someone your age's perspective, Grace, I would read that all day and all night to know how you deal with that from your perspective. I think that'd be tremendously yeah. powerful. One thing that I do um, on my social media page, I share a scripture every week. Um, and part of that is just to show my faith as a youth. And the youth are in the church right now are strong, and we are the future. And I love just sharing the gospel in a book. That way would be such a good idea to help. Yeah, super the cool. Tell me, uh, it, do you allow other people to follow? Can we tell people where they would find and be able to find that scripture every week, or is that more of a private thing? Perfectly. Um, fine, yeah. anyway. um, I share it on my Instagram page. It's at Grace G Winder G R A C E. G W I N D E R. Um, I just share a scripture every week. It's helps a lot of my friends. I've had people older than me, like my Sunday school teachers, be like, "Thank you for this." With some of aunts and uncles, and like I really needed this. And it's. I thought it'd be a challenge finding um, and by of- reading and just having faith, you can easily find find scriptures to share. Yeah, that's pretty powerful and a great, uh, great lesson and consistency and showing up for people. And the thing, uh, you know, Mike, like what you just mentioned is that because of the internet, like it can be, you're thinking that you're blessing the people, you know, that down the road or, you know, your aunts and uncles, people that, you know, you've met, but these are, these are faceless people who could be seeking out the gospel and you could be the bridge, the connection point from, right you know, from where they're at to, to where they could be. I think that's, that's pretty cool. So I'll make sure. Well, that- I, I think a lot about the 13th article of faith, that there's anything of good report. We seek after these things. And that's true, whether it's on social media, you know, you can find scriptures and quotes like that, whether it's in a book like ours, whether it's um, in good music, that there's a lot of good out there in the world. Yeah. And, and continuing to put more and more out there. I appreciate that you guys do that. Let me ask you, Mike, I know you've always got about a bajillion things cooking in the back of your head. What's the next thing that you're thinking about either writing about or doing? I know you work for the city of Mill Creek here, which is, uh, you know, just outside of Salt Lake city manager there. Are we sticking there for a bit? And that's, you, you know, what? Uh, Mill Creek just incorporated as a new city a few years back. And it's been a lot of fun to be the city manager there to help launch a new city. In fact, we just opened our new city hall last week. So pretty exciting times there. I hope to stay there for a while. Um, Rome wasn't built in a day. And, and <laughs> so to help with any city for a while is great. But in the meantime, you never know what books we'll write next or other. This was a good Sunday afternoon hobby. Uh, they put me in a bishopric recently, which has curtailed my time for Sunday afternoon hobbies a little bit. But it's always fun to still look for projects and things to write on. So we'll see what happens in the future. and. Grace turns 16 next week, so uh, we have a few more years with her in the nest, or maybe there is another project up our sleeves. Who knows? There you go, Grace. Dad's busy. Now he doesn't get to write the book. You have to write the book. Get out there and, there you and go. do the project. That, that is exciting. And if you end up doing um, that or some other project, I hope that you'll reach out and allow us to be able to tell people about that so that they can check it out, purchase it, or however, um, whatever that means may be for people to be able to know more about it. I would love to be able to 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 be a part of that. Um, Mike, I'm not sure if you remember, um, but we have three questions that we ask everyone who steps into the cultural hall. So I'll ask the three of them 
Still, you you were doing that ten years ago, Rich. I know. Listen, you some... stayed on brand through the decade. We haven't we haven't uh, we haven't uh, designed a new flag yet. We uh, we still do the three blocks of the cultural hall, all the things. Um, the first question for each of you, and we'll go uh, we'll go Mike and then Grace on each of these. Uh, the first one is: Do you have a calling right now? And if so, what is it? All right, I'm the first counselor in the bishopric in the Jordan North Second Ward. Um, I'm first counselor of the... no. The oh, president. sorry, I'm president now of the Youth Quorum and My Young Women's, and I am a stake indexer at the stake. Very cool. When, when you have a calling like a stake indexer, is it a certain amount of hours you're supposed to do a month or like do a thousand names every month? How do they, how does that calling work? Um, So we have, my stake is one of the few in the church that still has a family history center. Mm -hmm. So once a month, um, me and about 10, 10 more youth in my stake, we go there and index names and help other people there who need help. That's cool. Does it end up being kind of a party with snacks and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. As it should be. That's as it should we forget be. about as we get older. We go, wait, where are the snacks? Uh, They're refreshments are a tenant of the gospel, aren't they? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, first counselor. That'll make you bishop overnight. Uh -huh. You insist on he's like, no way, no thanks. Uh, the second question that we ask everyone is if you could pick a calling, either one that exists or make one up, what would you pick? Ooh. That's a hard question. And no age limit, Grace. So if there's something that, you know, some you have to be older, that's fine. You can throw out whatever that would be. But what would uh, what would that be the calling you'd pick? Mike first. You know, I think later in life, it'd be great to be called to be the ward cur curmudgeon. <laughs> you sit in the corner and, and get to lob grenades at people and keep them on their toes. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Keep, yeah. keep, everyone, keep everyone hopping. We, ward, we've got ward cur curmudgeon. We've got too many of those in my ward. So <laughs> it's, it's so <laughs> something great. to aspire to in my elderly years. There you go. What about you, Grace? Um, One calling I've always wanted to do is... um. A primary chorister, chorister. Um, mm -hmm. my mom was the primary chorister for a little, little bit when I was in primary, and, and I love music and I love kids, so that would be a really fun calling for me someday. Oh, that's cool. That's probably the one that we hear well, that, the most. That's a good answer, people. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Your dad's here with the curmudgeon answer. You, thank you for taking the. <laughs> hey, questions. kids, get off my lawn. See, I mean, it'd be good, right? <laughs> Uh, the final question that we ask, we ask you to interpret it however you may like okay. to interpret it. But the question that we ask is, what is your favorite part of your faith? My favorite part of, of my faith is the relationship we can have with our Heavenly Father that gives you some comfort and support. Um, if you didn't believe in God, you'd be talking to yourself. But because we believe in God, we can actually talk to our Heavenly Father who cares and 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 that comfort and that support I feel gets us through life's ups and downs, uh, keeps us humble on the ups and helps give us strength on the downs. And so that that personal relationship with deity is pretty powerful. How do you feel like you teach that or bring that to your family? That's a good follow up. Uh, we do. Family prayer is important to us. Father's blessings are important. Yeah. Even as we talk about prayer in our own personal experiences in life. I think kids can learn from parents on on the value of building that personal relationship with our Heavenly Father. Yeah. Grace, I'm going to ask you the question, but I, I just want to make a quick side comment. So I'm giving you just a little bit more time. Uh, I recently was at a, an, a another faith church service, and it was interesting to me because we always talk about uh, Heavenly Father and... Um, you know, that, that he is God, he is our father uh, and all these things. And, and it was interesting because as the pastor prayed, um, it, it just gave me a different perspective on it. He said, Hey dad, you know, we're here gathered and, and that's how he sort of addressed it. And I think that within, you know, the, the way that we traditionally would do it within the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we'd say, you know, we'd address sort of more properly or whatever, but um, it really brought home for me just exactly what you said, Mike, which is, you know, this, this this is our father whom we can talk to and can right. share, just like Grace, maybe you've asked your dad for some advice before, you know, our father in heaven can be that same way. And and for whatever reason, just hearing that in a in a different uh, uh, addressing of, of our heavenly father, I was like, oh, yeah, I need to remember that it, that it is a father who loves me, that, it, you know, it is a person who cares, who can 
respond and give that right. voice. Well, I think it's tender in the scriptures when you see Jesus cry, Abba, which is like saying daddy. Yeah. Or Brigham Young reportedly would even share a favorite joke he heard that day with in his prayers. And so <laughs> I think we can develop a personal relationship with our Heavenly Father that's pretty cool. Well, and I think he wants us to. You bet. You bet. Yeah. All right, Grace. Favorite hey, you're on. part of your faith. Favorite part of your faith. Um, my favorite part is just the happiness that it brings me. Um, a lot of people in other faiths, they or atheists even, they just um sometimes ask me, Why are you so happy? And I know if you've had the same experience. Mm -hmm. And it's because of the relationship we have with our Savior Jesus Christ. Um, I like to comment how I have my earthly father and then I have my heavenly father and I have my mom on earth and I have my heavenly mother. And I love just having those relationships. And our church is a church of relationships. We believe in eternal families. We believe in having a good relationship with Jesus Christ. And relationships is what makes humanity happy. It's what makes us have joy in life. So by maintain, maintaining those relationships eternally and earthly, we can be happy and get to the celestial kingdom one day. Yeah. Wow. Jeez. Well said. Well Move said. over, Mike. We all we I know. Is Grace now. He's like, <laughs> yeah. done. I, I've well, done it. We're good. <laughs> Grace is amazing like her mother, and I'm just lucky to be in this family. So they're great people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, very well said, Grace. I, uh, people that have just listened to this need to make sure that they check out the video to it because the happiness that you talked about the whole time, I've noticed this. I know Mike to be a smiley guy. Every, every picture I've ever seen, it's always, you know, we, there, there may have been times where I re referred to him sort of like guy smiley from the old Sesame street, uh, characters, but you, but you have grace. Uh, uh, a presence of happiness. And and I, I think it's so fantastic to hear as you relate that to your faith in, in God and in Jesus Christ and, and the Heavenly Mother and Heavenly uh, Father. And just so cool. Um, our time is up. People can uh, find the link to purchase this and other books written by Mike Winder. If you want to go back and listen to the previous episode, you can find that as well. It's called Hidden in Hollywood. Look for the link in the show notes. Um, you guys, I hope that this episode has nourished and strengthened your body, that if you're not healthy enough to listen this week, that you'll be healthy enough to listen next week, and that when the time comes, you will be able to travel home in safety. In the meantime, we'll be saving a seat for you on the back row of the Cultural Hall. <laughs>